Illustrator or Photoshop. As a digital textile designer, which one should you use to create your fashion prints? This video will help break down the pros and the cons of each software. Adobe's two most popular programs can do so much, and you'll probably run into designers who swear by using one versus the other. But if digital textile design is going to be your livelihood, it's a good idea to have an understanding of each program's strengths before you decide which to master. So this video will give you a quick overview of the tools for textile designers in each programs, plus the pros and cons of each. So if you're still deciding, which one should I use? This will help you decide. Let's start with Photoshop. One of the biggest advantages to using Photoshop is the ability to freehand draw. And if your strength as a textile designer is hand drawing, this is a huge advantage over Illustrator. There are lots of different types of brushes at your disposal, and there are different options in the options bar that allow you to change the look of your paint brushes. And with the tablet and stylus, you have even more options as far as the look of your brush stroke and the opacity of your fill color. There's also an option called index color, which will create a color table to help you create color separations, multiple colorways, and create a file that you can send directly to your printer to use as official artwork. And if you wanna learn more about how to use index color, check out this video. There are vector tools within Photoshop, but I believe the vector tools work best in Illustrator. I rarely use them in Photoshop, and one of the reasons I don't love them is that they make separate layers for each shape you create. Yes, you can merge the layers, but then it becomes harder to separate the elements, particularly if they overlap. Speaking of layers, this can be a pro or con depending on who you ask. In order to have the most versatility and editability, you really need to make use of layers. For some designers, it's no big deal, but for others, the layers can be really annoying. And if you're not careful about how you create your artwork, you can quickly end up with a large number of layers, which can make your file very large and hard to manage. Probably one of the biggest gripes designers have about Photoshop is that there's really no easy method to create repeats, particularly half drop repeats. They teased us a couple of years ago with a plugin they were working on and then they dropped the development so we were back to square one. Adobe did introduce a function called Pattern Preview in the 2020 update, which I talked about in this video, but there's still no automated way to do a half drop repeat. If you wanna try my method for creating half drops in Photoshop, you can watch this video. There's still quite a few steps, but it's the one method that's worked well for me after trying several things over the years. So now let's talk about Illustrator. For those designers, including myself, who don't do as much free hand drawing or your illustration leans more towards a solid, flat, clean lines type of look, Illustrator is definitely your program. It does have free hand tools like the pencil tool and the blob brush, but it's the pen tool that most people associate with the program. The pen tool allows you to use direction handles to accurately and smoothly shape your lines instead of relying only on your hand. And for someone like me whose hand is a bit shaky, particularly in the digital space, this is extremely advantageous. Recoloring a print is relatively easy, either manually with a magic wand, or with the recolor artwork function. And if you're having trouble adding color because you don't have closed shapes, either the Shape Builder or Live Paint will help remedy that. While Illustrator tends to do best with clean lines, they do have bristle brushes, which mimic the look of the more painterly brushes in Photoshop. What's nice about bristle brushes is that you can edit and color those brush strokes like any other vector stroke in Illustrator. 
What I love about creating prints in Illustrator is the pattern tool. It allows you to easily create a repeat, which is probably the hardest part about creating a print in Photoshop. With a few drop downs, you can go from a full drop to a half drop repeat and create a seamless tile that you can use as a swatch in your CADs or even as artwork to send to a printer. This is probably the biggest advantage that Illustrator has over Photoshop. Repeats are one of the hardest and most labor intensive things about textile design and Illustrator makes it very simple to do them. So here's my recommendation. If you're a textile designer who creates more painterly, hand-drawn or freehand designs, Photoshop is a better choice. If you create cleaner, more graphic designs, Illustrator is your jam. In an ideal world, you learn both programs and use whichever is best for the project. But if you have to choose one to focus on, think about your own style of design and choose accordingly. The last thing I'll say is this. There are lots of other programs you could use, even some proprietary software that's made specifically for a textile design. However, a lot of designers are using Illustrator and or Photoshop because they have greater access to the programs and they're less expensive for both an individual user and a company. And of course you can now use both programs on the iPad. Thanks for watching this week's video. Be sure to check out other textile design videos on my channel, including this one. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share this video if you found it helpful. Have a great week and I'll see you next time.